is going through a lot right now. Yes. It's not just one or two, it's the whole world Amen. going through something. And that's because the devil is launching <laughs> his final attack. Yes. Amen. 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 He see that time is running out and he's not winning. Amen. Come on now. So he's he's throwing he, he's throwing everything he has. I mean, it pandemonium all around, everywhere, everywhere we look, it's chaos. Amen. 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 On last week, we had a wonderful time. We were talking about developing the human spirit. Amen. 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 How important the human spirit is within our bodies. Amen. You know, God made the man from the dust. He molded him with his hands. <clears throat> but the actual creation was when he blew spirit into his nostrils. Nah. That came from heaven. Amen. 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 And our spirit is our heavenly gift to put us over in life. But we have to develop that spirit. Yes. Y'all didn't hear me. Amen. Nah. Amen. Amen. We have to protect and develop that spirit and let that spirit grow and mature, much like a little child. Yes, As he grows older, he gets stronger. And the day going to come when instead of you holding him, he'll hold you. Yes, Amen. 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 And the Bible admonishes us that our spirit, a strong spirit, will sustain you in sickness, yes, in weakness, yes, in calamity, because that spirit is in constant contact with God. Yes. When God can't get your attention or he, he touches spirit, the Bible said the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. Yes, Amen. 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 So on last week, I opened you up to do certain. Now today, I'm going to sew you back up. A complete, developed spirit. That's what it's all about. Amen. Like George Myers said, you can live out of your flesh or you can live out of your spirit. Choose the spirit. Mm -hmm. It's a higher life. Yes, Lord. It's a better life. You don't have to go through life like a low life. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. God has given you his word. If you get a hold of his word, and study and feed on his word. Nurture on God's word. Your spirit will develop. That's why Jesus told the disciples, I have food you don't know about. Yes. He was talking about spiritual food. He wasn't talking about meat and rice yes. and green beans. He was talking about the word of God. Oh, yeah. If you didn't get it like that, I'll give it to you another way. Man shall live by every word that proceeds from Jehovah's mouth. The word he's talking about is the word of God. He's not talking about your fleshly man. He's talking about the spiritual man. Paul calls him the hidden man of the heart. Yeah. The one that you can't see. That's more real than the one that you can see. Amen. 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 That invisible man in you never dies. The one that you can see, he decays. And he goes back to the ground. And we oftentimes forget we are a spirit before a human. And you see, when Adam sinned in the garden, he turned things around. I'm going I'm to go slow with y'all today. It's a rainy day and we have nothing but time. And besides, I'm not a long-winded preacher. Amen. It don't take all day for me to get my point across. Amen. When God made Adam in the garden, Adam fellowship with God. Why? Because he lived out of his spirit. Yes. And the Bible says he communed with God. They walked in the garden. And he named all of the animals. But when sin came in, now watch sin. Watch the devil. That's why we say watch the devil. Adam sinned, not Eve. And he wouldn't hear himself. When you sin, it leaves you embarrassed. 
But he fell from the spiritual life to a natural life. Yes, Lord. The spirit was on top and went down to the bottom. And the flesh came up. And God's first appearance with Adam. Amen. That's how we say it all the time. You tell on yourself. Before God could even find out what Adam did, he called to Adam because he already knew. He said, Adam, where art thou? And he calls out to us, where are you? Whatever your name might be, Alice or Mary or Liz, where are you? You on my side or you on the world's side? Amen. Because people switch every night. Every day. Okay. Show you how Adam told on himself. He said, I sinned. I ate the apple and I realized I was naked. And I went and I covered myself with fig leaves. And God didn't accept it. And that was the first form of religion. Doing something to pacify God's anger. Amen. God didn't buy it then and he won't buy it now. Oh. Amen. Amen. So you got to be real with God. You can't hide nothing from him. And God asked him a question. Who told you that you, you know, he said the serpent. The serpent told Eve and I did eat. And that's what caused us to be in this state. But now when Christ came and died on the cross. The debt was paid in full. Now that spirit God blew in Adam could take precedence, could have first place in your life. You didn't have to live by the flesh no more. Sin could no longer dominate you. You must choose to sin. And you don't have to do it. You don't have to do it. You no longer have to be a slave to sin. You can tell the devil, say, no, Mr. Devil, I used to do that, but I don't do that no more. Amen. 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 No, Mr. Devil, I, we don't do that no more. That person I used to be, I'm not that person no more. No. Amen. Amen. And while we, we say all the time, when you're born again, you're a brand new person. Yeah. That old person they used to know, they're gone. They're dead. They don't even exist no more. You're a brand new person in Christ. But anyway, we're going to get a little bit deeper with the human spirit. Today we're going to talk there are four steps that we must constantly make. I know he does that all, he does that all the time. And he always does it at an intricate moment. There are four steps we, are, we have to make in our spirit to make us advance and mature with God. Just like that baby has things that you have to do for that baby that he can grow up. But if you do them things faithfully, he will grow. And the day going to come when he can hold you instead of you holding him. Amen. Amen. And so it is with your spirit. But you got to safeguard your spirit with all diligence. I like the way the Bible words that safeguard, protect it from hurt, harm, and danger. Watch who you hang around with because association brings a simulation. In other words, if you hang with a crook, you learn to do crooked things. Amen. <laughs> Amen. They can't teach you anything else. Amen. Amen. You hang with Amen. a devil, you're going to learn to be devilish. Amen. 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 Say amen or you can say ouch. <laughs> amen. <laughs> okay, the first thing we have to do in our spirit is meditate on God's word. <laughs> that means when you read God's word in your quiet time, yeah. and we all should have at least 15, 20 minutes of quiet. I like to have mine before I lay down and go to bed. You meditate and rehearse what you read. Yeah. And if you sit in a corner, you talk to us, say, okay, God, now what were you telling me here? What did you actually mean? Like when Jesus said, verily, verily. He mean truly, truly. Yeah. 
I say unto you. Yes, Amen. Amen. And you meditate on God's word. And it will cause your spirit to grow. But now, there's a catch in that. There's, they got a hook in the bait. After you meditate in God's word, you, you, you get the sense of it. Now, what's, what, what's required of you? You have to put it into practice. You have to do what the word says to do. Faith without works is no avail. Amen. 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 You know, the Bible said God was not pleased with the entire nation of Israel because they wouldn't put faith with his words. One might ask, say, well, preacher, what you mean they wouldn't put faith? He told them to go ahead and take the promised land. He had given it to them. Amen. Amen. And what they said. He sent 12 spies. What did 12 spies say? 10 of them said, we're not able to do it. Because the people are bigger than us. And we look like grasshoppers in their sight. So they were saying in a sense, God lied to them. Amen. Amen. But they had two that would not be deceived. Amen. Amen. They had two that would not be deceived. And that their word was, their testimony was, we are well able. Let's go do it now. Their name was Joshua and Caleb. Amen. Amen. We are well able to do it. And they all got what they said. That's why I say when I, when I say meditate. When you read the word of the Bible, study how it started and stay with it till you find out how it ended. Yes. Amen. Amen. The ten that said they were not able to, they didn't go in. They died in the wilderness. Mm. They got it just like they called it. And the two that said, we, we're well able, let's go do it tonight, let's go do it now. They went in and they took the promised land. When all the rest of them died in the wilderness. Amen. Amen. I'm reminded of the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Babino, oh, I, I mean Abednego. <laughs> okay, I, I don't want to get over your head. I mean, they wouldn't take no wooden nickel. And the king told them to bow to a golden idol. And he didn't stop there. He said, when you hear the music, you know how we like to dance to music. Y'all didn't hear me. You know how we like to dance. He said, when you hear the music, of the clarinet, the cymbal, the tuba, the psalter. We want you to bow down and worship the idol. But the children of Israel would not bow down and worship the idol. They said, oh no, king, you got this thing wrong. If we bow down to your idol, we will surely burn. Okay? Now study the story with me. If we bow down to your idol and worship your God, we will burn. Mm. Amen. Amen. So the king got angry with them. And y'all know how the story goes. He heated up the fire. The Bible says seven times hotter than it ought to be. It got so hot, the soldiers standing guard on the out, it burned them up. And nobody in the fire yet. And he took them three boys and he threw them in the fire. Amen. Amen. And then when they looked in the fire, they were dancing. So he did get his dance, didn't he? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. They were dancing. And I love the report. How many of you heard the report? There were four. They turned out to be four instead of three of them. That's right. I got to preach that sermon to y'all one day. Remind me that to preach about the fourth man. I know who it is. <laughs> Come on. 
the fourth man, he threw in three, but they saw four. And it gets worse than that, y'all. When they peeped in and they saw it, the king asked for a report. And he said, did not we throw in three old kings? Shadrach, Meshach, and Babado? He said, yes. He said, but well, why did we see four? And the fourth one looked like the son of God. <laughs> and people ought to say that about your life. If you build up your spirit, yes. they ought to see more than just you, a fleshly person. They ought to see Christ when they see you. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. You ought to have a glow about you, a halo, a heavenly aura, not a care in the world. He that the sun set free is free mm -hmm. indeed. So whatever happening around you, like the pandemic and all of that, you don't have to fear that. Amen. 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 Trust in God. Ooh, ooh. Amen. He said, Amen. I'll, keep, I'll keep sickness far from you. I will not let it come close to you. Though 10,000 may fall at your right side and so many on the left, he's going to keep it away from you. But anyway, I gave y'all the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. How the king cast them in the fiery furnace. But it didn't do him no good. And we're going to be tried and tested. It ain't going to do him no good. We're going to win regardless. And the Bible said the weaker we get, the stronger we are. Yeah. <laughs> y'all didn't hear me? Amen. The weaker we become, the stronger we are. In fact, there's one scripture in the Bible say, let the weak say that I am strong. But when we get out the way, our spirit gonna come forth. And it's filled with God's spirit. And then you're gonna see the power. Amen. Amen. That's why it says, save God your spirit with all diligence. I'm gonna tell y'all a little something else. I don't know if y'all ready for it. A lot of times in a plane crash, and things like in car wrecks, when life is at, on, on the line, if someone would just stand up and say, Jesus, that person would get saved. Yeah. And the Bible say, all that call on the name of the Lord right. shall be saved. Amen. And he cannot deny himself. Not a man that he should lie. That's why sometimes you have plain fresh and you have one survivor. <laughs> he knew the way out. And I come today to tell you the way out. Get with God. Stay with God. Study his word. Meditate on his word. Feed your spirit. Practice the word. The word say don't lie, quit lying. Amen. Amen. It ain't hard. It ain't deep or profound. And as you do that and you incorporate these things into your life, you're going to begin to nurture and grow. You know, when God formed the earth in the book of Genesis, the book of beginnings, he put a spiritual law into effect. I don't know if it was, if it was here or it was at the other place I was talking. Faith is a spiritual law. One might ask, well, what do you mean, brother preacher? I'm going to give you a scenario. Faith works all the time. Much like gravity. Yes. If you don't believe gravity will work all the time, get on the house and jump off of it. Mm. <laughs> I'm going to repeat that a couple. If you don't believe it will work every time, the like electricity would shock you, you stick your head. Every time you put your hand, it would shock you. That's right. That's right. It's a law. Faith is a law. It works every time. So what I preach what you say, when you pray and it's not answered, you didn't have no faith in it. Have no faith. That's why I preach to tell you, put some heavenly substance in it. Put some heavenly substance in. 
Put enough faith in it. And watch God move. He's not going to never pass up faith. Just like you ain't going to never jump over a house and not fall. Don't believe me? Try it. Hmm. <laughs> you get up off the ground and say, you know, that preacher might have had something. <laughs> he might have been right. <laughs> uh, and you ain't going to have to jump too many times to learn it works. No. It works because God set it in motion. And faith works the same way. So if you're not getting your prayers answered, don't blame God. Your answer is closer than God. It's right here, right in your mind. And what the Bible say, renew your mind. Let the mind be in you that was in Christ. What kind of mind Christ had? Anybody heard him think before? Maybe he spoke his thoughts. I remember once back to the Bible say. I will pray the Father. He will. <laughs> you see that? Right. That sounds certain to me. Uh, right. When he prayed, called Lazarus from the grave. How many of you remember that prayer when he prayed for it before he called Lazarus out of the tomb? Let's see our Bible scholars. Okay, that's all right. I, I, I'm not here to condemn no one. He prayed before he called Lazarus out of the tomb. And he said, Father, I thank you that you always hear me. But not for me, but for the crowd. Lazarus come forth. And Lazarus come walking out of the grave. Right. In grave clothes. Huh? Right. Faith works. You won't give him a job. He's standing by you all the time and said, please give me something to do. I can fix that for you. Amen. He's standing right back to you. You run around the house and say, oh my God, what am I going to do about this? Oh, this needs to die. Yep. <laughs> and my kids, oh Lord, what am I going to do with them? Uh, and Satan's standing right there every time you turn, he turns with you. He said, you give me a job, I'll fix it. God sent me here because you cannot please him yeah. apart from me. Yeah. And we want to please God. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Yeah. Because the one that comes to God has to first believe that he exists. Or you wouldn't be praying to him. Yeah. So you got a servant. He gives you a servant. Someone to serve your needs. And you won't employ him. You won't give him nothing to do. You won't fix it yourself. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You'll say 13 rosaries and pray all night till the first ray of sun and faith sitting right there saying, only give me the job, I'll fix it. Yeah. I'll fix it in a hurry. Mm. I know just how to fix it. God sent me here to fix it for it. Mm. Amen. Amen. And we want to keep it ourselves. And, then I, and, and the teacher will tell you, it ain't about you. It ain't about you. This religion is not about you. It's about God. God has equipped you with everything you need. You got ministering angels to help you. But faith, I use my faith. Remember I told you I was leaving God for a new ram truck. Y'all keep living. Y'all gonna see me drive that truck one day. Oh my Lord. <laughs> and when I'm gonna get out of that truck, I'm going to say, how you did that? <laughs> Come on. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I got faith on the job. And you know when he left my house, he took his hard hat, he took his safety glasses, and his steel toe boots. And he worked it. He worked things in my favor. And when y'all gonna look up again, y'all gonna see me driving it. And I think I'm gonna get a black one. <laughs> With everything in it. Ship to shore radio, everything. Just to show you, you can have what you want yeah. if you stay in faith. God is not against his people having anything. He's not against it. Don't make a God out of it. God doesn't have a problem with nobody having money. But don't put money ahead of him. Don't say, well, my money's going to sustain me. And then number three, we said well, number one was Meditate on God's word. 
And I tell you what meditation was. Think about what it said. Let it saturate your mind. I give you a scenario about the 12 spies. They were hung by their tongue. They spoke that in the atmosphere and they got what they said. They didn't have to say that. God won't do it. And you don't have to say God won't do it. I believe God. I believe God. If it says so in the Bible, that settles it. Amen. 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 I got to second guess God. God is not a man to lie to you. There's no benefit in him telling you a lie. Amen. Then we went on to number two. We said you got to practice it. When you find out God's word is true, you got to act like it's true. When we you find out you got to watch your tongue, that a lot of your words are stop, stacked up against you. Amen. Amen. You got to watch the things you say. You know, many times it took me a long time to get my mouth in control. It took me a long time. I kept wondering why I was defeated, why I was defeated, why I was defeated. Amen. Amen. But thank God I always had sense enough to stay in the Bible. And I come upon that scripture and say, your words are stout against you. I want to do things for you in your life, but your words rob me of the opportunity. I can't go across my word. I cannot alter my covenant or change it. If you decide you don't want nothing, well, I can't make you have nothing. If you decide you want to go to hell, I can't make you go to heaven. I can offer it to you. I can tell you come, come to church and be saved, but I can't make you do it. Why? Because you're a free agent. You have the authority in this earth. Whatever you decide, that's up to you. Amen. Amen. 